Hello everyone. Let me just adjust this here. Let's see if I can get no, I can't get it all the way in the shot. That's okay. We'll make it work. Alright. Um so yeah. Alright, we've got somebody already here, I see. Let me just grab a chat on my laptop here. Hello, everyone. Good morning. So today I wanted to share um, a couple of things. Um, I don't have a whole lot of time today. I got a hard stop in an hour and a half. So that's why I'm, I'm streaming a little earlier than I usually do, um, just because I haven't been able to stream or even edit very many videos lately, and um, it's uh, it's just I've been so busy, so I just wanted to squeak something in this morning um, just to keep going with um, some of the stuff we're working on. So the first thing I wanted to do, I'll move these aside, is show you guys um, the lovely Dee Dee Wellingham, um, I'm sure you know her channel, um, if you don't, I'll put it in the description below, um, at the end of this video, but she sent me this piece a while ago, and I had it custom framed, so, um, these frames really match my other frames, I have like a rustic kind of country decor, but this, this sort of like champagne color is very prevalent in my home so I chose this um, style frame so what's cool is um, I'm going to hang this up on my wall and uh, it's actually gonna go right above my art desk so I took down I had a bunch I'm just gonna take this off so I had a bunch of like sketches right here so I'm gonna actually um, I have another piece coming to me from someone else who wants to gift me a collaboration. Um, so I'm going to hang these two right above my art desk. So Dee Dee, I will see your work all the time. Um, hello Daria, welcome, good morning. Alright, so that's that. I'm really excited about that. I thought, I thought it looked pretty good. Good morning Teresa. Um, another thing before we start, I just wanted to share, um, my friends and I on Instagram, um, I have a group of lady friends who I chat with almost daily, um, and, uh, we have so much fun coloring together. So, I'm sure you're familiar, um, with some of their work already. If not, again, I'll put the links in the description below after the video just so you guys can check them out. Hello Leslie and Teresa, welcome, good morning. Yeah Leslie, that's cool. Um, so anyway, we've been working on this page, here I'll we'll grab the original, from Mythomorphia. And so, two copies of the book, so you may ask me why I printed it on blue paper. But I asked Kirby and got his um, approval um, and the thing is, is like, you can color this page and it would look similar to this, but because I wanted it a nighttime scene, I just thought it'd be so much fun, um, to try doing it on, um, dark colored paper. If you're going to try this, just be warned that it's very hard to see the last when you first start. So that's why I didn't show you the beginning stages of this, um, because I could barely see it, so half of the time my face was like, you know, so I would be blocking the, <laughs> I would be blocking the, um, the, the drawing if we did that, and pardon my messy hair, um, but that's okay, you're not here to see me look glamorous, um, <laughs> okay, so, um, but that's okay, we're not gonna work on that today, um, I just wanted to show it to you while it's in progress. Um, we're not going to post this until the end of April, so I'll probably stop showing it. Um, 
been showing it a little bit on Instagram too. I'm really excited about that one. Um, but the piece we're going to work on today, what you came here for, oh, excuse my voice, um, is this, this little lady here. And let me zoom in now, now that we're settled and not. Okay, so I have my trusty Prismas, and we've been working on this piece. Um, yeah, so let me just think here. Um, I didn't really plan this video out very well, but how is everybody? How's your morning going? Um, or your evening, in the case of Leslie and other folks around the world? Um... I'm stalling while I think of what I'm going to do here. We decided at some point in the last stream or two that this lady was Belle from Beauty and the Beast, although not officially, just in this coloring. So my big question to myself, I guess, is what am I going to do with the background? <laughs> I guess I could work on her... <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh no, hold on, let me take a drink. <clears throat> I'm sorry about that. Hopefully my voice sticks around. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, <laughs> so, um, I guess I could start on the roses and her outfit while I think of what the background is going to be. I think that's a good plan just to get us going and while I'm working on her other bits if you guys have suggestions for the background or something you would like to see me do um, I'm all ears so just put it in the chat I'm taking votes I can't promise I'll do any of it but I'll take votes um, <laughs> uh, yep yeah, so I'm gonna start with Let's see, will this focus? It's 902 Ultramarine. I'm going to sharpen it, though. Just give it a good little, um, oh, mm -hmm. one moment. So whenever my pencil uh, broke, whenever that happens, I switch over to this guy. So frustrating. So if you have Prismas and they break, the best way to sharpen them is this way, where you rotate the sharpener around the pencil instead of sh rotating the pencil in the sharpener. It just keeps it from breaking a little better. This happens though, especially with these pencils. There we go. I like it, Daria. Wood paneling in an old library. Okay, something like that. That sounds good. I was even thinking like, like a stone wall of a castle or something. I don't know. It could be a, like a French countryside. We could do so many things with this. All right. So now that we have a sharp point finally, I'm just going to go in and um, start figuring out where the darks and the lights go with her outfit. And I'm going to make it blue. Because I think that's the dress she wore at the beginning before she got uh, shacked up with Mr. Beast, you know. Alright. <laughs> yep. So I'm just defining some shadows. And I'm using a cooler blue, or, you know, like a, a cooler variation of blue than the blue in her earring. But only for the shadows. And the reason why is <clears throat> this stone, because it's close to her skin, will reflect, reflect a lot of warmth to it. 
But down here, even though she's got her hair here, it's going to be a lot darker because the light's coming from above. And, um, you okay over there, Daria? Something happened there with the chat. I, I don't see what you wrote. Um, hmm. I'll keep an eye out for that. I don't know what happened. Yeah, yeah, the paneling may blend with her hair, although I could do a pretty dark, like a shadowy corner or something, and it would still give a lot of contrast. I like the idea of the books. Um, I'll think about it. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, guys. I already have technical problems. It's only going to be one of those days. <clears throat> okay, well, um... Anyway, I don't know exactly where we left off, but the light's coming from above, and when it when it's as the light goes down, it's going to lose strength as it goes. And the reason why this happens is is the farther you get from the light source, the less strength it has. So when when we're up here it's bright you know so all of these highlights are happening and then as we get farther down this little gem will be darker than if it were up here because there's less of a highlight on it there's you know there's her cheek and and you know just the the distance from the light that has changed am i still buffering Can you guys see me okay? Oh, I think it's okay. Hello, Janet. Good morning. I got your email. Thank you for joining the color along. Oh, uh, that reminds me. Yeah, um, for those of you who have done the... Oh, good, Daria. Thank you. For those of you who have done the Lucky Clover Sprite, that, that giveaway page that I gave away in my Facebook group, um, if you're interested in being featured in my next video where I show off um, everybody's work, then you gotta go to my Facebook group and there's instructions on how to join the video. Um, if you have any questions, just ask. Um, but... Hi, Trisha. Good morning. Welcome. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll be doing one of those at the end of the month. And I'm really excited. Some of the coloring is so beautiful, but everybody did a great job. Um, I, I just, I, I can't get over it. I love seeing everybody's work, so. Um, anyway, uh, so what was I, oh yes, yeah, so, so as the light goes farther from the light source, um, we're going to have less of it. So when it, we come down here and down here, um, we're going to have, uh, the, the color starts to cool off and become less warm. Um, but I will switch over now. I don't remember exactly what colors we used, but I can take a good guess. Uh, let's grab a scrap. Whenever you're not sure, best thing to do. I do these all the time. You can see I, I have like little charts I make myself just so I can remember. Okay, here we go. So what I do is when I print something on my printer and I I don't like, um, I don't want that print for whatever reason, like if I'm printed to by mistake or something like that, I just um, tear the printer paper up into scraps so I can test stuff out on it. I don't like wasting paper. So this is just like regular old printer paper, so it's not going to match the color of the paper exactly, but that's okay, it's close enough. Um, always great to have a little scrap handy. I'm guessing we used Copenhagen Blue, let's see. Yeah, we probably used that. And let's see what the light color is, I'm guessing... I don't know for sure. We're gonna figure it out. Maybe true blue. Looks like that would work. Yeah, there we go. Bingo. Okay, so 
for the rest of the outfit we're going to use I may use these back and forth so I'm just going to show you them both right now I will exp uh, call them out as I'm using them too so I'm using 903 and 906 good morning Andrea good to see you dear all right, so I'm going to start um, with 903, and um, just come on in here, and give a first layer. Now this is the lighter area of the ribbon, so um, it will be a different color temperature. So what do I mean by color temperature? Um, in color theory, there's a warm and a cool version of every color. So even blue has a warm and a cool version. And I think you can see pretty pretty well here. Let me actually zoom in a little more. So that way, hopefully that's all right. So um, this, this is a warm blue. It's closer to green than it is to purple. And this is a cool blue, and, and together, next to each other, they really bring out their differences. Um, so this is a more purpley blue, and this is a more green blue. Um, so I like to play with the warm and the cools of each color to kind of um, give a more realistic or uh, more dynamic look. Um, oh, free day today! Oh, that's great. Yeah, I don't have a free day. I have a hard stop at 9.30 a.m. for me, but um, I just wanted to squeak something in. Oh, hello. Adri, you got it. You're becoming a mod. So, um, I've started inviting friends to um, mod for me, if you're interested at all. Please let me know. Either email me at lauracolors2 at gmail.com or you can just go ahead and post in the comments and I'll get in touch with you somehow. Um, but uh, yeah, I've, I've been having some trolls lately in the live chats. Um, not always, but the last time that I live streamed it was pretty bad. I had a group of, I'm guessing, school kids being silly. So I really had to, like, basically stop what I was doing to, to kick them out. Um, so yeah, I'm just looking for people who are quick with the ban and, um, you know, don't not afraid to use it. So welcome to the team, everybody. We have a new mod. Um, and I really appreciate it. Uh, oh, you're welcome, Leslie, anytime. Yeah, and you can see, like, once they start blending together... Oh, I'm sorry for the dog next door. He's probably spotted a squirrel or something. <laughs> He's a friendly guy. He's He doesn't usually bark, so... Um, uh, but yeah, you can blend them together, and they work really beautifully together. But you can see how it, it does give a different color, and it just sort of helps um, push push that color back in space. So another tip with color theory is that warm colors come forward in space, and cool colors recede. So anything on the cool side of the spectrum... Let me grab my color wheel if I'm going to talk color theory. Hello, Michelle. Welcome. I'll be right back. So, ladies and gents, if you don't have one of these, let me zoom out just so we can talk about this for a second. Well, more? There we go. <laughs> so, um, we're colorists, right? So, um, if you don't have one of these color wheels, I highly recommend it. They're fairly cheap. You can get them online. You can see mine is so well loved that it's um, had some abuse over the years. I, I bought this in 1998. 
may still sell the same sort of thing. Got some paint on it, you know, it's it's a mess, but it still works, so you know, these are great. Um, so as far as um as far as warm and cool colors go, so anything so you got the the, the warm and the cool and it goes right down the middle. Well, it's actually right here, sorry. Let me grab a ruler. So all of the the ones right here so every every color on this side of the spectrum is a cool color and what that means is that it has like a cooler color temperature but then each individual color also has a warm and a cool version of that color and everything on this side of a color spectrum is a warm color so all of these colors uh, and every variation, obviously, like like skin tones are warm, browns are warm, so you can kind of see like um, the tints and shades of different colors in this little section here. Um, all of these are warm colors, so what that means is they'll come forward in space. They're going to um, they're going to bring your eye. It, they're generally a lot more. Um, vibrant in my opinion although you can have very vibrant cool colors um these just really seem to come at you a lot more so if you're looking to really make something jump forward in space you can see like i've i've used warm colors in her hair and her skin mostly that's because those are the colors that they are um but also um they're going to come forward. So that's why I was thinking maybe a castle wall. That'll be, I could use cool grays. Um, while I'm talking, I'm also going to keep working. Uh, oh, hello, Joey. Welcome. So I'm going to use 906 uh, and just blend in these two. So I don't want it to be too drastic of a difference. It's very subtle. So that's why I put it under everything else as an undertone. But you will see it, it will look different than the, the darkest blue in there. Um, yeah, nice, Joe. You stopped in for a work break. Thanks for spending it with us. Yep, and I have, I have to actually go um, and and i got to keep track of the time here in an hour. Thank you. I appreciate the support. I love chatting with you guys. It's so much fun. Um, but yeah, if you guys have other suggestions for the background besides like a castle wall or something like that, I'm trying to decide what I want to put in the background and inside and maybe outside of the circle. Um, so for now, we're just working on other bits. while I figure out. So I'm taking suggestions, so go ahead and put any ideas you want to see in the chat and we'll think about it. Uh, uh, Adri, warm grays are mixed with yellow, brown, and cool blue. Yep. Um, so warm grays, um, it's funny because uh, you can mix a gray with any colors. So here, yeah, let's grab our color wheel again. So this is a, this is a great actually little demo. Um, oh, actually no, they don't have it here. Um, so in the color wheel, say you have a really bright color and you want to dull it down. And actually, we're going to do this. Um, I can do this now with the with the ribbon because we're going to need to do it for the reflected color of her hair. So hold on, let me grab the color I need. It'll probably be this little guy. So browns are a shade of orange. Or, yep. So like if you add black to orange, that's what these little doohickeys are right here. So if you add black to orange, you get brown. And this is actually almost dead on. And you can see that the opposite of blue on the color wheel is orange. 
So when you're going, if you have a really, really bright color, like this is too bright for not having enough light, right? So like just filtering down and not hitting, not hitting. So at this point, it's pretty dark here. We don't have a whole lot of light. So I like to desaturate my, and <laughs> desaturate, how do I explain? I, I don't like the colors and the shadows to be as vibrant as the colors and the light. And that's not always the case. Sometimes I break the rules, but um, in this situation, I definitely don't want it that bright. So every single gray, and this is why I'm bringing it up because Adri mentioned warm grays and cool grays. So every single gray is actually made up of the two complementary colors across the color wheel. So if I mix yellow, orange, and blue, violet, I'm going to get a much more gray tone. It may not, it depends on what um, mixture you make, but it's, it's not going to be as vibrant. So if you mix violet and yellow, or green and red, any of the, of the colors across from each other on the color wheel will make a desaturated gray or brown, depending on the mixture and the amounts that you use. So I'm not going to make a full warm gray or cool gray but rather I just want to add a little of these, but this will definitely demonstrate. And let me zoom in a little bit. Just so you can see a little better. Hopefully that looks okay. So I didn't mean to make this a color theory lesson, but that's the way it's going. So why not roll with it, right? So you can see here, I'm knocking out a lot of the color saturation and this is really actually becoming a, a nice gray so in the deepest part of the shadow where her lock of hair here is really blocking all the light I'm taking basically like taking the color out of it so if you ever have a spot like say say you make you know a, a mistake with color and, and it's too much of one color well you can always Grab the complement and knock it back and make it less gray. It's more important what the value of the color is versus the actual color itself. So as long as you have the right light or dark amount, then you can, there's a lot of leeway that you can um, make with color. So yeah, I don't know if you can see this. Let me see if I can. So it is fairly gray there. You're welcome, Patricia. Leslie, murky brown. It may be that you're using two warms. Okay, so like if I were, see, this is another reason I mixed in the cool blue. If I were just to use the warm blues that I have here, um, then what I would end up with is a, a more muddy brown. And sometimes that's the color you want. Where did my pencil go? I swear, I'm having a morning, I guess. I have the Copenhagen blue. Oh, it's right here. Okay, good. We're good. <laughs> I'm holding it. <laughs> oh my goodness, guys. Uh, so if I were to just use the Copenhagen blue and not mix any of the ultramarine in, then I would get a more brown color and less of a gray. And the reason why is because you want to mix the cool and the warm temperature of each color. So I mixed a cool version of blue, which was the ultramarine, with a warm version of brown. So a cool version of brown would be something like this. So I don't know if you can see on the video, but this brown is a lot closer to yellow than this brown. This brown is more red. So what we want to do is we want to pick the warm color of one of the of our complements and the cool color of the other one of our complements. So it can get kind of confusing, but don't let it frustrate you. If you're not sure, you can always, you know, take your swatch you know, test sheet or whatever, and just go ahead and mix them. 
So we can mix, I'll show you the difference. So we're gonna do, this is actually still quite a good gray. These colors really work well together. Um, it's probably why I use browns and blues like all the time. My work, like when you look at my Instagram account is like so much blue, it's funny. Uh, I did this backwards. So actually let me, let me do it the same way. It, which color you put on top of each other does matter for the final look. So I started with glue here. Yeah, here we go. Here's a good example. So, Liz, Liz, are you getting something like this instead of something like that? This one is the um, Copenhagen blue, which is a warm blue, mixed with the um, burnt ochre, which is a warm brown. So we're getting more of a brown tone. But this one is the ultramarine, which is a cool blue, mixed with burnt ochre, which gives you a much nicer, well, I wouldn't say nicer because this is a really nice color too and, and very useful in some situations but um, a cooler gray instead of a, a brown. Yep, you got it. So that's what's happening there. And that that hung me up for a long, long time. So don't be upset if, if it takes a bit of experimenting with mixing color to really find out what works well. Um, but it's cool that you're working on that, I mean, the best way to do it is just to go by experience over time and just figure it out. Um, so you're already doing that, which is awesome. Um, okay, where was I? Sorry, I'm, I'm distracting myself today. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm back to using 906. And we're going to keep going here with this part. So now as we come closer to the light source and there's less stuff blocking the light, it'll warm up and become nice and uh, like a warmer blue, similar to the color in her earring. But this is a question that I get asked a lot, like how do I make things look realistic and have have depth and how do I get certain colors so I figured um, as I live stream I'm gonna try and explain these things a little more um, because color theory is a pretty daunting huge subject and I kind of hate like um, like I hate like doing like technical like videos where I just explain something the whole time I like to show it in practice I think we're such visual learners, it's so much easier to understand and grasp that way. So I'm just going to show you guys some color theory as we go in the channel. Oh, I'm sorry for the noise outside. I have my window open. Is it really loud? I can always shut it. It's just such a nice morning and the first morning where like it hasn't been like super freezing cold here. So I just wanted to get some fresh air in the house. So I threw the windows open. <laughs> oh, little pickle. Hi. I don't think I've seen you here in a while. Nice to see you, dear. So again, with color harmony, I'm just working the blue that we're using for the collar or not the color, the um, choker rather, and the um, the earring, I'm sort of working that into areas of the hair that are going to be dark, just to give it, and here's that mud we were talking about, but because it's on brown hair, that mud looks really great as a shadow. So this is another like reflective color kind of thing, even though it doesn't look blue at all. 
it does add that subtle color harmony that I was talking about with um, with the earring when we were doing that. With the, and I, I'm also working that into some of this up here, but I'm going to actually knock it back with some brown. Love how the blue shine is hitting her skin. Yeah, yep, I did that in an earlier video. This has been completely done live stream, so if you guys missed earlier episodes, they're all on my channel. You can check them out. Um, yeah, I, I specifically <laughs> um, made an earring on, on this drawing just so that I could do that um, effect. Um, let's see. Oh, thank you, Pickle. Thank you, dear. Oh, okay. So let me neutralize that little area in her skin that I added the blue. So we're going to use 943 again. And again, this will be that mud, mud colors, as Leslie says. I love, I love how you call it mud. Um, so just warming that, that little spot up. I don't want it to I don't want her skin to look blue but ha having that blue in there does really give it something um, okay thanks for stopping in Joey I appreciate it <laughs> and thank you everybody for the likes too I just noticed that really do appreciate it um, so again I'm doing the same thing where I'm just working in the little valley here there's like a little divot where her shoulder starts to come down and meet her chest there so I'm just giving a little bit of that same blue shadow just near the collar or choker rather I keep saying collar I'm having a tough word day <laughs> um, that's okay, we all have our off days. Okay, Joey, come back anytime and, and yeah, hope you have a beautiful day. <laughs> all right. So again, you can see by just adding these colors into different areas of her skin, I'm gonna switch over, I'm sorry, to 943 again, I'm gonna do the same <clears throat> I'm going to do the same process um, where I cool it off with the blue and then warm it back up with the brown. And you'd think that this really, you know, you'd think, oh, well, why don't I just put a nice gray in there? But this actually creates a totally different color than if you were to add just a gray to it. So by mixing your gray, you have more depth and dimension, and I feel like it has more life to it. And also by mixing the colors that you are already using in your work, instead of jumping to a new color, you're again creating that color harmony, making the palette mesh together. Oh man, we've got street noise. Is that, is that hard to hear when I have that noise in the background? I don't know if I've streamed with the window open like this. And it is like morning rush hour time, so we might get more street noise. I don't live on a, sh a sh crazy busy road, but um, I do get like school buses and stuff like that. So that's probably what we're hearing. Oh good, thank you, Adri. Am I saying your name right, dear? If I ever mess up anybody's name, don't hesitate to correct me. I really do like to make sure I pronounce them right if possible. Um, yeah, birds. Yep, I have this nice big tree outside. And it is good for birds. My kitty loves sitting at, she's actually sitting and watching them right now. I'm surprised she hasn't come over yet. And, investigate it but you know she's really wrapped up with those birds they're really teasing her 
Oh, good. Um, yeah, pickle, um, restricting your palette is a really nice way to figure out color harmony and to get a nice, um, consistent color scheme. But you can use as many colors as you like as long as you're really, um, really, uh, I don't know how to explain. I, I've had pages where I use so, like almost every color I have, and then I have pages where I use like two colors. So there's no right or wrong. Um, using a lot of colors is not bad all the time. It's only bad when you don't use it in a judicious way, if that makes sense. Then it kind of looks like really hectic, like, um, or it could, it could look garish, it depends. But like I've seen pieces that are all, you know, all the colors of the rainbow that are just gorgeous. So it really, it really takes a very skilled hand to, to use a lot of color, but it is possible. Hello, Tara. Yeah, so pickle, um, a couple things you can try if you love using a lot of color on the pages, but you don't want it to look like that. Instead of using the bright bright saturated colors straight out of the um out of out of the <laughs> the, the tube no uh, I'm talking like I'm painting um instead of using the straight color you could do some mixing like we did and make a lot of colors but still have some of it shine through and I'll tell you I've seen pieces done like that and it is gorgeous so you can try playing with color theory and mixing your colors and using less saturated versions of all those colors that you're using. Um, another fun thing to try is I've seen it done where um, people use very pale versions of the colors or very dark versions of the colors and only have the contrast of the light and the dark in certain key spots um, where uh, you know where where it's most important. And again, by doing it that, that way, you're making it more subtle, but you're also really creating a lot of, um, you know, a lot of different colors in your piece. Uh, hey, Lee, how you doing? Um, yeah, you're welcome, Pickle. And Leslie, Linda, Alberton depends. Um, what, Les? I'm a little confused. <laughs> you got me stumped there at what color your hair is now and if it's natural or previously. Is that meant for me? I don't... Okay, well, we'll wait to see what she says. Um, I'm confused. <laughs> oh my. It's not hard to do, so don't worry. Oh, did I miss it? Oh, oh, it, I did miss it. Sorry about that, Linda. <laughs> um, thanks, guys. Uh, yeah, I don't know, Linda. But you're welcome to take a screenshot and, and give it a go. Um, yeah, it's like a red auburn kind of a brown. Just throwing a little more of this in there just to sort of bring it all up to the same level. All right. So we have, um, let's bring this little. So you can see I'm putting brown in your color, but it doesn't look brown. It just looks a little less blue, a little less bright, still blue. But we're just kind of knocking back that brilliance and making it a little more subtle. And that um, that is another key to realism is not using super saturated colors in every spot. So now I'm going to switch over to a bright color, <laughs> 903. Now you guys see, I use this, um, I use these colors, blue and brown, a lot in my work, and it's because I just gravitate towards this particular color combination a lot. But you can use these same principles with any opposite on the color wheel, which is 
so much fun. Um, so if you're like new to color theory and you're not sure how it works, I would just recommend you get out a scrap paper and just go ahead and play with blending different colors together and see what happens. Um, it really, like those kind of color play sessions, um, I do that sometimes when I'm too tired or don't have a whole lot of time to color, but I want to just play with my pencils and I, like I have new brands of pencils that I haven't used a whole lot. So I'll just sit there and play with them and see how they work. And this is a great way to really get familiar with how color mixing works. So you can sit in front of the TV and just mush your colors together. Uh, oh, I'm missing stuff in the chat, sorry. Um, Adri, oh, they're, they're flowing now. Yeah, I don't color my hair either, Adri. Um, I don't have a bald spot or anything yet, but I do feel like my hair does thin out as I get older. So I, I, I stopped coloring my hair in high school. Uh, college. College was the last time I... Um, Janet. Ah, you guys. Janet, yeah. Yeah, I'm letting myself go gray naturally. Um, I figure, you know, I'm, I'm going to get older and I'm going to look older at some point. So, <laughs> I have a couple grays in there. Um, my boyfriend kindly pointed them out to me. He's a gem. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, we, we tease each other. Um, but yeah, uh, good morning, Mel. Nice to see you here. Yeah, no point in fighting it. Yeah, and I think that, um, there's nothing wrong with coloring your hair. I know a lot of people who do it, but it really does depend on your hair texture if you can get away with it, I think. Um, I have really, um, fine hair, and it really, uh, doesn't like to be dyed. I'm gonna switch to 903. Here. Um, good morning, Patrice. Nice to see you, dear. All right, so I'm gonna go in now, and we're gonna do a similar treatment for her little dress top here and the collar. <laughs> I was calling this the collar. I'll, I'll see. I may add more to this later, but let's see how this all kind of meshes together, and then we're gonna. Um, so I'm going to leave the the, the place up top a white, but we'll, we'll go in there with some, some grays. And I'm just going to go ahead and fill in these little circles first. They're going to be a little bit darker because the lace will be blocking some of the light. Even though we can see it. There's still something, you know, the light's still having a harder time getting there. Let's see. <laughs> Leslie. Hey, if you can rock it, then by all means, enjoy. Um, I used to dye my hair all sorts of weird colors um, when I was in college. Um, like purple and red and... I did, I went black at some point and had like really, really black hair. I've, I've been like almost every color of the rainbow, I think, except I didn't, I didn't normally bleach my hair, um, cause it is so fine and thin. I, I was concerned about it falling out. Um, but yeah, uh, let's see, in my case, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that, Adri. Aw, oh, what kind of illness, if you don't mind me asking? That's a shame. So it's like alopecia or something. Um, and Janet, I'm looking into silver hair shampoos. 
That's a nice idea, Janet. I think when I go more gray, if it's not a nice color silver, I might try that too. It's over here. Oh, Patricia. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, I haven't really gone gray enough to start those yet, but um, I don't know why I haven't started going gray uh, sooner. So I'm getting to the point now where I should be. I don't know. And I would look at my mom to see why, but she dyes her hair, so she dyes her hair like religiously, so I have no idea what color it is. For real, you know. Um but you know, she can get away with it. She's got a different hair texture than I do. It's funny. Uh, oh, Crohn's disease. Oh my goodness, diabetes, food allergies. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Aww. Well, I hope you can figure out how to handle all that. That's a shame. And I'm guessing you have a good medical team helping you out and trying to figure out what's best. Do you have to take supplements? <sighs> like vitamins or something? I don't know. I don't know much about it. I do know a little bit about diabetes. My uncle has it. Um, I'm lucky that I do not. But yeah, he struggled with that sometimes too. shots of vitamins okay well good at least they have you at least they're helping you out oh my goodness wow yep I hope you find a nice way to manage that And yeah, thank you for being my mod. So everybody, Adri is a new mod. And um, I did put out a call on my Facebook page um, a little while ago when I got trolls in my chat. So if you are interested in volunteering um, to mod for me, and there's no set schedule, so I'm going to take quite a few mods in that way, hopefully we can just sort of cover everything. Um, yeah, I don't really schedule my chats or my live streams, so there's no like set schedule you have to be on or something. But if you see me live stream, you can just pop in and help me out. That's basically what we're doing there with that. Really uh, casual. <laughs> I'm uh, not looking for a lot of dedication there on that but you know if you want to help um, I just feel like as my channel grows I might have more trolls coming so I figure we'll nip that in the bud before it really becomes a, an issue so as I go closer to the light source I'm lightening up my touch and you can see I start holding the pencil further back on the barrel and I'm using the flat even though I have this really nice point I don't need it I'm using the flat of the, the pencil 
so more like the side than the tip. Okay. Oh, good. I'm glad that they're helping you out. Hopefully that works for you. Mm -mm. Yep, we get used to it. a lot of stuff, huh? It's like amazing how much people can adapt. I have another friend on Instagram who's constantly going to get dialysis, and I'm so in awe of her bravery. Um, she's really sometimes struggling, uh, but she's so sweet and uh, so it's such a great attitude, you know? It's amazing what we can get through. And I know, Leslie, you and your son, you guys have struggled a lot too. But I can see how much you love him. So it's so cool, like, no matter how adverse our situations are, people are usually very, very adaptable, which is amazing. Uh, oh, you'd like to study medicine? Well then, yes. Are you asking all the nurses, like, a bazillion questions? Like... <laughs> All right, so let's give a little more color right around here. Uh, oh, thank you, Pickle. And Oh no. Oh, I hope it goes well, Janet. And Leslie. Yeah, I love how you talk about your son, Leslie. He seems like a very sweet kid. Mm hmm. Yeah. And I feel like the coloring community is especially a uh, resilient bunch. It's like we use coloring as a way to escape from all the issues. And I think because of that it makes us a lot stronger. And it's funny because a lot of the coloring community is dealing with something or other. Not everybody, of course. But like, I, I came to color in because I was struggling with anxiety and depression a little bit. And I think it's good that we talk about our struggles because it just makes it seem more normal when you're going through it, you know? Um, but luckily, coloring has completely cured all of that for me, and so I think that's why I continue to do it. Um, not really chatting over here at 6 a.m. I'm barely awake. <laughs> oh, that's all right, Tara. You don't need to chat if you're... You know, lurkers are welcome, too. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Janet, you're welcome, Janet. Uh, oh, thanks, Pickle. I appreciate all the likes. Yeah, that, that helps me out. Um, it helps our videos get found. So if you, if you have YouTubers that you really like watching and you want their channel to get, you know, bigger and grow, then that's the way to help out, is liking, commenting, subscribing, all that stuff. It's free for for all of us to do, you know, um, but it does really, really help um, channels, you know, get, get more. Uh, Linda, I'm not sure what color I'm going to do the roses. I was thinking red since she's Belle, right? But that would mean she's at the castle, well, or at least, I don't know. I haven't figured that out either. 
I was thinking red, but that might throw off the color scheme. So I was also thinking blue, but then I was also thinking like a peachy pink color. So I'm all over the place on that. Uh, that's why I started her outfit, because I was like, well, at least I know what color that, <laughs> that is. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yellow roses. I don't think there's any yellow in the film, but we don't have to go by the film. She could be smelling a different rose. Like, I could put yellow roses in her hair and then have, like, a countryside sort of landscape in the background. Like, she's, like, picking roses before she ever met Beast, you know, just she's got, like, a thing for roses, so, you know. <laughs> I came to cry with the damage. Yeah, Pickle, it is so amazing. And I'm glad that we all feel comfortable enough to share what we're going through. I think that's really cool, too. Like, I find that the community is so supportive of each other and so understanding where, you know, maybe some other communities um, may not be. But by sharing what we struggle through, I think it makes us all stronger. And, um, yeah, a lot of people um, deal with quite amazing things and are such sweet people, so... It's so neat. Uh, if not red, I do yellow. Yeah, I don't know. Mm. Yeah, a reminder that we're not alone. Yep, exactly. Everybody's dealing with something, even if they're hiding it. But see, I don't like to hide stuff like that because I feel like it's like a it minimizes a problem that could be easier if we share it. You know, so like, um, by, by being ashamed of being depressed or something like that, then we sort of like, um, it isolates us because we're dealing with something all by ourselves that we could share and, and, um, sort of get support and help just by talking about it. Um, so yeah, like, uh. I was there once too, I totally understand, like, it's really hard to tell people, but if you can share it with people, I think it does help, makes it easier. Uh, yeah, hiding it, yes, exactly. Um, Adria, I came to crying because of my illness, before I did a lot of sports, Oh, that's a shame, Adria, I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, Pickle, by, by, like, dealing with with sharing your your struggles it really I think helps other people that's why I'm very open about you know um, that I dealt with anxiety and depression because I want people who are dealing with that to number one know that it's not that weird or, or that they're not there's nothing wrong with you if you have a tough time in life and you have that problem you know that doesn't make you a lesser person just means that you're going through something and you're you know life isn't always peachy um but then also yeah it like shows them that like there is hope you know like at the end of your little struggle there uh you know there's always there's always um some hope involved i think that hope goes a long way for some to feel better about it oh, i think i'm missing some of the chat hold on let me see Past midnight. Oh, thanks for coming, Leslie. I'm so glad you got to sh sh um, see a live stream. And uh, let's see, hi, Debbie. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Uh, oh, you have epilepsy, Patrice. Oh my goodness. Well, I had no idea. You, yeah, your your coloring is beautiful. Um, let's see. Oh, hello, Connie. Oh, thank you for coming by, and um, I 
Hope you have a beautiful day. Thanks for joining us. Mm -mm. Yeah, I'll be going soon too. I do have quite a busy, busy day today. I was like, you know, I have to get in early my live stream or I'm never going to do it. Um, so I'm so glad that we got to chat and hang out together, share our struggles. Hopefully everybody's feeling a little bit more supported this morning. It's like a little group therapy session, huh? <laughs> oh, Abby, Abby wants to join in now. Uh, oh, you're welcome, Patrice. Anytime I love seeing other color tubers. And if any of you um, in the chat or even if you're watching after this video is done, um, if you guys have channels that you want me to check out, don't don't hesitate to tell me about it because I do watch ColorTube all the time. Um, you know, instead of like watching TV, I tend to watch uh, you guys. So even if I'm lurking and, you know, and working um, or, uh, you know, lurk, like coloring and, and um, lurking, I am checking you guys out. I love seeing your stuff, so... Please link it in the in the in the uh, comments, and I'll check it. Oh, come here, come here, Abby. <laughs> yeah, afternoon therapy for you. <laughs> My little kitty wants attention. Sorry, guys. <laughs> All right. I'm just working on this sleeve. We're using the same color. I don't, I don't know if I showed it recently. It's 903. Uh, let's see. Oh, neck injections, Connie. Good luck with that. I hope it goes well. Is that for your shoulder? I think I remember hearing something about that yesterday. You've got a stiff shoulder, right? Hmm. Well, I hope it goes really well. Adding layers of color and this is a lighter area because the light's coming this way and it's definitely going to hit her sleeve a lot brighter than this which is lower down so you can think of light as like it's almost like water like it hits things first and then sort of flows down right so um, it's going to hit things that are closer to it first. So the sleeve is a puffed up sleeve. It's raised up above her shoulder. So it's going to be lighter. It won't be this light, but I'm sort of just building it up slowly. Um, oh, your neck. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> is it like a neck strain from looking down while you work? I know sometimes I get neck pain because I color for too long by looking down. I've started working upright, and occasionally, not for my videos, I don't know how I would set that up, but um, when I'm doing long sessions, I work at my easel. Um, well, hello, Susie. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Uh, what are you eating for lunch? Sounds Sounds like a... Good plan. I should have some breakfast after this. Um, oh, herniated discs. Oh my goodness. Well, I hope those, those shots really help you out. Oh man. 
Yeah, if anybody has any neck pain, um, I do recommend um, getting a dusk easel or um, a floor easel. You can get like a rigid backboard and um, you can color upright and that actually will relieve a lot of pressure instead of looking down, which is not ergonomic. You look straight ahead and uh, it just helps. Oh, that sounds really good. Banana, kiwi, and blueberry yogurt. Hello, Ashador. Nice to see you here. I remember you from yesterday in Dee Dee's chat. Um, oh, it was a bad accident. Oh my gosh, you broke your back. What were you doing, Connie? Were you doing acrobatics or what? Oh my goodness. Well, I'm glad you're all right. Gosh, that that's serious. Oh, driving a car. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, that's terrible. I wouldn't know it. You have such a good attitude. I wouldn't know you were in such pain. Well, we're all down with something, I guess, huh? Well, what's great is coloring really does seem to help just about everybody, <laughs> no matter what you're dealing with. It's so amazing. I don't know if you guys can hear, but the babies downstairs are crying. Oh my goodness. I live in a, um, an old house, but it's been separated into apartments. So I live on the top floor. But the, um, the neighbors down below, they are very sweet. But they have two little children. So sometimes we get a bit of noise there. I don't know if you guys can hear it though. It's pretty quiet. All right, Connie, good luck. I hope you feel a lot better real soon. Hello, Alana. Nice to see you. Am I saying that right? Alana or Alana? I don't know. <laughs> They're sweet because they know. Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't mind. Um, it's it's really cute when they're playing and they're running around and giggling. Stuff is so cute. So I don't mind the noise. It's no big deal, but I hope it's okay for the videos. <laughs> All right, so we got something done today. Not much. I feel like I talked more than I colored, but. Uh, oh, excellent. I'll have to check out your channel. Uh-huh. Oh, what are you painting? I love it when we all art together. So amazing. It's so cool that we can do this. If I had known about live stream and art, I don't know why I didn't think of it. I would have totally done it a long time ago, I think. It's just funny how some stuff doesn't occur to you. But once I come to the color community and 
like saw everybody live streaming. I was like, oh, that's that looks fun. <laughs> Oh, meerkat and a red panda on your live stream. Well, we'll definitely have to go check it out. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're getting there. We have Quite a lot of that blue down. Um, now I'm gonna switch over. Now I use the the cooler blue near her hair, but for these areas where it's fairly light, I'm going to use the Copenhagen blue, 906, and I may work some of that um, more gray blue color that I mixed here back here. But let's just see how this all works out. Oh, you, you had problems with the streaming quality. I don't know how my streaming quality is, I think. Sometimes it's good and sometimes it's not. I don't think we have any control over that, though. Uh, thank you, Alana. Uh, uh, let's see. Oh, Adri, so what what background are you doing? What are you working on? I'm so nosy like that. I always want to know. Oh my. So I'm just getting under here, under that lace bit, that white area. I'm going to just add a little drop shadow to it. So just right under. And now again, with the holes in the lace, these little like, like little circles, I'm going to just right underneath, give a drop shadow. So this will make it look like the lace is sitting on top. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Oh, I love Hannah Carlson. I have a, a whip. Um, where is that book? I have my books all over. It's really a, an issue. Here it is. I actually have two copies of this book, so I had to check which one was the right one. This whip that I've been working on, I'm almost done. You guys have seen me work on that, too. I just love her books. She's so amazing. Hi. Hi, Hi little whip lady. Uh, I'm not sure what OBS settings are. Um, mm -hmm. Never try. Oh, thank you, Alana. Um, I think it just takes practice. At first, um, I'm a painter before I started coloring, and um, 
and it, it took me a while to transition. Like you can see my first coloring, um, I struggled a lot with um, how to layer and blend the pencils. And um, I think it just takes time to get used to a new medium. So for anybody out there struggling, don't get discouraged too quick. Oh, we didn't do the back sleeve here. Let me bring that up to the same level. I mean, you know, you'd think since I illustrated it, I would actually not forget spots, but you know how that goes. Um... Oh, have a great day, Patrice. Hello, Mel. <laughs> um, this this page here isn't in my books, though. This this one is just a random um, page. It was meant for my book when I drew it, but um, it didn't make the cut. I had a bunch of illustrations that uh, I had concepts for and that I did, but it, they, they didn't fit the book's themes as well. Um, so they didn't end up in the book. And that happens with every book I make. I end up drawing about, I'd say, uh, like for, I had 42 pages in my latest book and but I drew about 70 pages of sketches um, and then picked my favorite ones and sort of figured out which ones would be the best to work together um, it's a hard thing to do it's a hard process to, to say oh no you're not gonna make it you know but I liked this drawing enough in the sketch form that when I um, when I published the book I knew I wanted to to finish it up and make it a single illustration so this one's just in my Etsy shop as a single page um, oh watercolors I love watercolors but um, I'm completely self-taught in pencil and watercolor um, so I'm not an expert, but I just like it. I just love, I'm really a mixed media artist. Um, my main medium before I started coloring was acrylic, but I would, I would mix in a lot of other medium, um, with my paint a lot. Um, oh, am I back? Buffering? Hmm. Do, 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 do. Okay. We're buffering. Oh, good. Thank you. Thanks, guys. All right. I don't know what you guys missed, but um, yeah, watercolors are, are a great medium, too. Um, so it's actually 9 30 so i came back just to tell you i'm gonna have to head on out but um we almost finished the the dress here so we'll we'll pick that up and while i'm deciding the rest um we can do i think the roses next time we'll figure it out we'll figure it out as we go <laughs> Sorry about the buff, you guys. Hello, Lisa. Unfortunately, you've caught the end of this, and I'm about ready to head on out. But, uh, yeah, thanks for stopping in. Uh-huh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, yeah, so the next live stream we do, I want to finish up her dress, and I think I actually want to do her eyebrow and her fingernails and all those little little details and then we can work on the roses while I decide what the background is going to be. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for joining. Um, I hope you guys have a beautiful day 
And uh, for those of you who missed it at the beginning, I did get Dee Dee's um, drawing framed, so I'll just show you again really quick. So I have it framed and it's ready to go. And I'm going to hang it probably tomorrow if I have time. Um, so yeah, I think it looks really nice in this frame. Um, so that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, have a great day. I hope you have a wonderful time coloring. And yeah, thanks for stopping in. Oh, it was tough to pick a side. I was going to get one that that had both, but like both sides. But um, I figured when I hang it on the wall, you're still going to only see one side. So I figured I could always just flip it. You know, I can take the frame and flip it if I want to. Um, so yeah, I just uh, I, I just looked at them and just picked one. It was sort of a both sides are beautiful, so it didn't really matter. <laughs> um, but yeah. All right, guys. So. Um, yeah, if you're watching till the end, don't forget to hit that like button. I really appreciate it. And subscribe if you're not, because I do these all the time. And yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.